Uh, the, the, the president of the council said, if you've got some questions, get in touch with the, with the emergency manager because we're not taking questions right here on the floor. But at that point, you had the seven points. I absolutely recall it, and I absolutely recall you saying that the information will be forwarded to your office so you can review it. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you recall the, that? The information was presented to you and Thursday. The, yeah, no. Thursday. It was, it was last presented week. to you in the council meeting uh, a month no, or so. No, no, just the bullet points was presented to us. It was a draft of the plan. I had it. It was a draft. Ms. Brown, did we receive any information beyond the bullet points before the last Thursday? I, I really don't recall, Mr. Neely. No, I did not send that to you. I asked you to come and talk to me about it. I asked you to meet with me and to come and talk about the seven plans because we were still working them out. Mm -hmm. We were still drafting the plan. And I wanted the council to be a part of that discussion initially. Mr. Early, that, that just, <laughs> I, I'm disturbed by that. But I have not had opportunity to have dialogue with you about it. We have not had the opportunity to discuss the seven point plan. It was submit, this plan was submitted to our office Thursday of last week. So we've, I've had not a good opportunity to have a review and a dialogue with you about it. And if, if my decision is, is made tonight, I'm not gonna support the seven point plan. If I have to do it in total, I will say no to it based upon the lack of information and, and, and transparency. And I, and, I, and that's, that's one of the things that I just can't appreciate. Yeah. I can appreciate a lot of things, Mr. Early, but one of the things about making sure that we're inclusive in this decision-making process, if you come to us with this decision right now and says this is what we have to do as a body, I think you should include us more so than just to have an opportunity to say, uh, I sent it to your office last Thursday, gave you the opportunity to come and talk about it, and that's just it. But part, of the, part of that transparency, Councilman, involves you taking the initiative once it's extended to you to get the information. And that was the purpose for bringing this up to you weeks ago. That's the reason why I mentioned it to you now. This is not the first time you've heard of that. We'll just have to disagree on the seven points. I guess we will have to disagree yeah. based upon the facts that that didn't happen yeah. as, you, as you talk about it that way. Mr. Early, I'm disappointed. So am I. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councilman Neely. Person Galloway? I just had a um, couple of questions. Um, where the water is concerned, um, the company that will be doing the study, will they be um, comparing surrounding areas? They will be looking at a complete usage of the system. Uh, I don't have all of the factors that they put in, built into their model to look at, but there will be some comparative study relative to the rates for maintaining the system. Now, I, I can't get to the, drill down to the level of what that's going to be until we see the final draft. And the, the reason why I ask that question is, um, I know, you know, during um, the process of running for city council, there was some concerns about some of the surrounding areas not paying as much as we pay for water. Um, and I don't to, know how the yeah. dis distribution was. Yeah, they'll be able to address that okay. in the presentation. Okay. When the study is complete, they will present the study, they being the consultants to okay. the council. And then um, another question that I had was the, the Blue Ribbon Committee that was selected, can you tell me what the process was? How did you determine who would be part of that? Were they well, I, I nominated? Well, I consulted with the, uh, with the mayor, consulted with the council president, and I consulted with the staff. When you uh, say staff? The administration, yes. And I also had some conversation with some members of the community as we talked about the focus of the committee and what it was the committee was supposed to be looking at. And is it, is, and I don't know about the um, Blue Ribbon Committee, but is it normal for the process since it's supposed to be for everyone that the city council wouldn't be included since the mayor was, is that, for the selection of the, for the Blue Ribbon Committee, since you consulted with the mayor, some of the staff, and some of the community, is it normal not to consult with some of the city council to see if there's people in their ward maybe that would have been interested in sitting on that committee? Is that not a normal practice? I suppose it's a possible option, but I spoke with the council president, and it's my understanding that you know, through him, uh, he was going to give recommendations, which he did, actually. Okay, because I, I didn't get that, that no, um, well, invitation. In, in, you were just elected, and my concern was at the time, um, 
Councilperson Galloway, what was to Mr. Early was that there be a representative from each ward on the Blue Ribbon Committee. That okay. was the direction. And I believe that you made sure that happened. Is yes. that correct? Yes. But that yeah. was really my okay. involvement in direction. Because I've had people that have um, yeah. I just want asked me about being on the I wanted to make sure board. the committee had representation from every ward. Okay. And then um, the I just have two more things really fast. Um, one of the questions with the seven point plan is and I understand having you know a plan to make sure everything is measurable and you can you know make sure that you're meeting the points my question is is it necessary for us to adopt it is it necessary for us to adopt it or can we still work out work off of it without the what is the purpose of it being adopted and accepted as as opposed to making sure that this is a format that we look at for ourselves without a, that adoption process well as i just stated over the last 45 minutes or however long it's been it's my desire to have the council uh, aware of what's going on with the plan so that you're a part of the process. Right. Okay? I could do it without having the council be a part of it, but I prefer to have the council weigh in on it and be a part of it because ultimately it's the council that's going to have to implement the strategic plan. You're going to have to implement the biennial budgeting process. You're going to have to implement those best practices for sustainability. Uh, so it just makes sense from a management perspective to include you in that discussion. Now, again, for me, as a manager, it makes sense to have a criterion to determine when the city is ready to emerge from the emergency manager. Rather than saying, okay, we've eliminated the deficit, now it's time to turn it back over to the city. If you look at the deficit elimination plan, some of these things should concern you very much, particularly the, the legacy costs, the issue of governance. That's just a beginning. That's just a starting point for framing the discussions that will have to take place to change that under this scenario okay. that you're under. Public Act 436 doesn't give the city a lot of options in terms of what happens. What I've tried to do over this last five months is increase those options so that the city council and the mayor are a part of that, what I've referred to as that third leg of this political and policy oriented relay that you've been running here since September, I mean since, uh, yeah, I guess September of 2011. So it makes sense to me to have a guide that we can all work from. I'm not saying you gotta agree with every point mm -hmm. and everything on it. What I am saying is that if these things are not addressed, then the city won't be able to sustain itself. If the city doesn't address the legacy costs, if the city doesn't address the issue of governance, and I said the city, not the emergency manager, but the city, that's you, the mayor, and the people. That's the city of Flint, not me. I just happen to be the one who's steering the ship to get you to that point so that you can make it to the point where you can turn it back over to, uh, to uh, home rule. Right. And there is no other way. I mean, you know, there is no other way. And I appreciate and every time I've asked you any questions, you've, you've always, you know, been available for me. As a new representative on the city council, I, I'm just asking to make sure that when I vote that I'm voting with all the necessary information. So just to kind of make sure that I'm understanding what you're saying to me tonight, what you're saying is we cannot work off of this plan unless it is adopted and if we don't adopt it, then as a city council, we won't be involved in the process. That's what, it, I, I don't know if that's what you said, that's what I heard, yeah, no. and I could be wrong. No, I'm I, so sorry, y'all, no, please no, bear with me. Yeah. No, that's, that's not, that's not. That's, that's not, what get order, Mr. What, President, since you like order. That's where the order comes. That's, that, that's not what, Exactly. I mean, okay, it's, it's okay. Good, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good I'm paraphrase. just trying to make sure that my vote yeah. is a well-informed vote. The, 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 the well-informed vote is the one that recognizes that you need a plan to come out of financial emergency. Okay. That's the well-informed vote. 
This is a plan that does that for you. This is a plan that we've discussed pr prior to this time. Mm -hmm. This is a plan that each and every one of you had an opportunity to discuss with me at any point. It is now, I think, critical that we move forward. I didn't realize, and, and, and you did talk to me about it. I was, you know, I'm, I'm informed. I didn't realize that it was an adoption process. I, I believed as we were working through these details that just like on my job, that they give me a plan of action as to where I'm going and what needs to happen. And I don't understand always adoptions and the, the sense of urgency of it because I, whether it's done tonight or not, we still are able, we have them, and we're still able to work off of them. So I was just asking that, that, that point. So if we, this is making sure that we're part of the process. It, what it okay. does is it makes sure that you have been a part of the discussion. Mm -hmm. I have discussed this with you. We've talked about the issues. Uh, and the only person that I did hear from with respect to any questions was Councilman Mays. Okay. And then my last question, and we can move on. Um, as far as the, ch is there a committee that is in place making charter revisions or, um, or amendments? No. Okay. Absolutely not. Okay. And there won't be. What the committee will do. Will or recommendations. Be, is there anyone what, making recommendations? What they will do is they will frame recommendations based on communication with the public. Is there somebody, there's somebody doing that right now though? No, that's part of the process. Oh, okay. We're, we're, there, we, there will be some discussion on governance. Okay. And that discussion will take place in the public. Okay. But no amendments will be made to the charter as a result of this group's work. Okay. Are, are you through? Council I think I'm, now? yes, thank you so much. You're welcome. Councilperson Van Buren. Yes, uh, I don't hopefully intend on going very long, but I do want to say that from what I've seen in the past and where we are now, I think we're trying to really do some positive movement with your direction because you have been very involved with this council in giving us information, providing the training, in having a path that we need to go to to get to the transition side. It's not easy, no change is easy to accept. And sometimes it's difficult uh, when you've seen things happen in the past differently to what it's been the, the last couple of years under other emergency managers and now we have someone like you, I think that is very informed, very action directed and you have a goal that will help us to achieve. So it's difficult sometimes to move and to believe because of all that has happened. <laughs> but, you know, some of what uh, Councilman Neely said about receiving the information Thursday, that, that was a problem also for me because I need to read it. I need to understand it and look back at other things. But with the brief time that I had, I did look at what you had presented at our last council meeting when you presented it to us. And I looked at my notes and it matched with what you had said. And so I thought, that's good. There's no surprises, you know. Um, I also asked a couple of the council representatives to say, okay, uh, by adopting this, that does not mean that we have this in cement. I mean, there's going to be hopefully some flexibility if needed, but we need to start someplace. It's like, how can we make a cake if we don't have a recipe? You know, how can we get out of our situation if we don't have a, a way to get there? So I guess I'm taking it that way because I know we still have ways to do things, and one of it is by having this council become more active is council representatives with our training and our committee meetings and so forth. That's great, and I'm looking forward to more of that happening. I can see that happening, and I don't want for something for, to get in our way and get bogged down. Uh, we're trying to take so many things apart that 
we could be spending our energy on a lot of other directions too. Because I think we're all smart enough to know what we need to do. So um, I thank you for this document, for the information that's presented. It, it is easy to understand and follow. It's not that, you know, sometimes when you look at legal information, you know, it's like, now, what did they actually say after this 14-page document? You know, I mean, there is a direction, a path, and we need to start someplace. So, again, I want to thank you for being that open with us, for involving council and sharing that information. And if I can make another, uh, this would be a suggestion, and, and it's not only this material, it's any material when we get ready for committees. is if there, we can have that information ahead of time so we can look at it. Like even the committee meeting we had this afternoon, uh, that was the first time I've actually seen some of what was going to be talked about. And uh, that's some serious information that if we're going to make them into ordinances or whatever we're going to do, we need to be as well informed and prepared as much as possible. But again, um, thank you for trying to get us to move forward, and I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. President, Thank you. President, just after you finish, can I say one more thing? Please, Real can I say quick. One more thing yourself? I, I just want to order, Mr. President. If we're going to do that, uh, then I want to say one more uh, thing after uh, he do before you speak. We so you can order talk me. to Mr. Early after, okay? I have a question, Mr. Early. Yes. <clears throat> In the uh, point one, the deficit elimination plan, Previous um, deficit elimination plan submitted to the state suggested borrowing funds from other funds in the city of Flint. And I know we don't have the detail today, but in your deficit elimination plan, is there plans to borrow money from any funds no. within the city of Flint? No. Thank you. Thank Mr. you very much. Mr. President, I move. Are you recognizing me? I'm recognizing you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. President, I move to postpone this until the next council meeting or any scheduled special meeting that Mr. Early and the council would schedule so that the council can become more familiar with it. I met with Mr. Early and I understood I was the only one. I think he said that. Is so there, I move that. I so move. Is there support for Mr. Mays' motion? Support. It's been moved and supported to postpone. Roll matter. Point of order. Discussion, sir. Discussion. That's right, Mr. President. You have five minutes, Mr. Mays. <laughs> well, that's what you say. I just said you have five and minutes. And five minutes. The council determines that, Mr. President. No, no. I'm not going to waste up five arguing with okay. you. I probably can do it in three, but quit making up rules as we I'm sit not here. Up rules. Go ahead. Um, I move for postponement one because of the way the chair chaired and interrupted me wrongfully and ruled me out of order when I tried to appeal the decision. Anybody who knows Barbara's rules know Ms. Galloway, I'm watching gestures, demeanors. I was right. I can appeal the decision of the chair when he ruled me out of order. You might not know that, but it's true. So I'm watching my colleagues and I'm doing it based upon what y'all said. Y'all can believe that this is just a a, a laid out pattern. Really what this is under Public Act 436 is that so close to a consent agreement, you don't know what that is. A consent agreement means when you vote on something, you're saying this is what it is. Even though it's not a formal consent agreement under Emergency Manager Law or Public Act 436, it's more than what I heard y'all talk about. It could be construed as a consent agreement going to the governor saying this is this. In fact, one, I was in the Public Works Committee. A lot of y'all don't know it, but later on in the meeting, we will do what's called a point one amendment to the budget. That point one amendment will officially let us enter in the dialogue about decreasing water rates. See, their plan on water is to fix infrastructure take all of the money from what some of us call unlawful high rates and fixed infrastructure. I have an idea from the residents that I represent that Mike can do half and half. See, in the budget process, if you 
pass certain things before you know the detail, you're voting on some things. We put economic development in the budget process. I did that in finance committee, and it was accepted, and it's in there. I hear all the talk about lowering water rates, but for the new people who mechanically don't know how to do it, we're going to try to enter it into a real dialogue in what we call some of the old heads, a point one amendment, and we'll get it in there. And then we'll be able to discuss, when it's our turn, decreasing water rates. So it's a procedure. If we vote on this too fast, I know how I'm going to vote. You vote too fast, you done did like a consent agreement. You done locked yourself in to some things under emergency manager law, and it's more than just a laid out plan. He can deny it, Scott can deny it, and the mayor can deny it. See, remember, before y'all got here, it was two people voted no or two people voted not just to accept the emergency manager law, it was Neely and Sargentson. The rest of them said, come on in, we ain't did our job, we need help, and we don't want a second chance. So what you'll be doing here, in my opinion, you'll be saying, before I really know what it is, before I know the details of the deficit elimination plan, because remember he's saying, we waiting for the governor to approve it. The governor, if it's a true deficit elimination plan, they should have been them approved it. The old one had using water bill money, the new one don't. We just hearing this, I just heard it Thursday. I want to know a little more about what I'm voting on. It don't have to be the specifics, but what's the big hurry? We could set a special meeting day after tomorrow if we had to come back. We don't have to wait a month to approve this. It makes sound, it makes sense that if this is so important and if we really going to work together and walk on our own two feet, council presidents shouldn't speed it up. You know, really, I'm waiting to hear from the public. I'll postpone it until after the public speak. I represent the people. Thank you, Mr. Mays. There's been a motion to move and postpone this resolution further discussion yes councilman neely you have five minutes absolutely thank you it won't take me that long to, to get out these points I, mr early darnell I, i've been here before you know as we talk about these issues that, that rush to make a decision on i agree 100 percent that we need a plan absolutely we need a, pl a plan to deliver us from where we are now it's just that i don't know if i believe in this seven point plan in total and those that you've been engaging in dialogue with are those that agree with you 100%. You have not asked individuals that may have a different opinion to weigh in on some of these issues. And that's what I'm talking about. I, I don't agree with all seven points of this plan. And as it relates to the emergency manager, the last time the emergency manager stood before this body and said they wanted our input and our vote, it was on the Karagandi water line. We made a resolution and we passed it unanimously. Yes, sir. And the emergency manager went downstairs and changed it. Yes. And changed it to totally something different. You made in your presentation, Mr. Early, you said you don't need our vote to do the seven point plan. So what I'm saying is I don't want my fingerprints on anything else that could not allow the public their full input into this process and I'm just the motion is to postpone not to say no but to postpone because you know we received this on Thursday you know we did and I'm just saying I don't agree with a hundred percent of your seven-point plan I ask can we take it point by point you will get some yes votes from Neely you won't get a seven of them but you'll get some you said no so you tied our hands here for something that you said you don't need our vote to do anyway. So I'm just saying to you, Mr. Early, in the spirit of compromise, in the spirit of transparency, in the spirit of working together to deliver this community from where we are now, let's take a little bit of time so we all can be on the same page. Thank you. Point of order, Mr. President. If I could. Point of order.
Mr. Point of order, Mr. President, is this our discussion? Now, I know he can act as counsel, and if he's Mr. acting as counsel, he can be included in this discussion. Now, I said a point of order. Do he get the I'm going to tell you one more time. You can tell me two more. Point of order is always in order under no, Robert's rule. it's not in order right now. It's always in order. It's not in order. Well, I know you a dictator. I'm a dictator, okay. Okay, then you just like the emergency manager. Okay. Point of order is always in order. Mr. President? I'm not going to argue with you, Mr. Mays. Mr. It's Early, do you want to respond? Yes, I do want to respond uh, for a couple of reasons, uh, one of which I think the councilman has woefully mischaracterized what's going on here. And I can't speak to your experiences and what happened to you before I got here. But I can stand here and tell you that transparency is a two-way proposition. And to the extent that you may or may not want all seven points, all seven points are germane to the financial health of the city of Flint. And we can stand here for the next two hours and debate about whether or not or what you knew and when you knew it. Uh, but that won't get us any place. The point is, just as Councilwoman uh, Van Buren said, we've got to start someplace. And we've started at a point that I'm convinced will get the city of Flint where it needs to be. It is not a consent decree. That is not true. What it is is a plan based upon the issues that we've discussed, the issues that you're familiar with. You may not like them all, but you're familiar with them. You know you are. And in order to move forward, I brought this before the city council and the mayor, you know, not to, for you to say I agree with everything the emergency manager has said in this regard, but that it makes sense to have a plan. And it is a reasonable plan that speaks to the factors that will help the city come out of receivership. It's a two-page document, two and a half, roughly. So it's not voluminous. And, you know, I, I guess I take exception with the fact that somehow or another you think that there's some sleight of hand related to this issue. If I thought that were the case or if I thought that would be the reception, I probably wouldn't have brought it to you. But I think it's important, again, going forward, and I don't know how many times I have to say this, that you have some involvement in getting to the point where together we can recommend, not just me, but we can recommend, and it's not directly to the governor, it's Treasury that does the oversight and the governor's office, that the emergency, that there is a plan rather to eliminate the emergency and to sustain the work that has been done. Thank you. It's Point. important. It's important to me to make sure and this is my last comment on it, you know, it, I think I've said all I, I need to say about it. It's important to me to understand, or for, the, for you to understand, that there are a number of ways to do this job. And the way that I want to do it is so that I or no one else from Lansing has to come back and run the city of Flint. Now you put whatever kind of face you want on that and, and, and call it transparent or opaque, whichever you want to. But the bottom line is, we have a job to do, and a team can only have one leader. And I'm trying to give you the information that I believe you need to be a part of the team. I'm not asking you to agree with everything, but I am asking you to understand the purpose and perhaps not be so quick to mischaracterize the intent. Point of information. Councilman Neely. Yes. It's, um, during Robert Rule's order, when there's an open motion on the floor with a body, only the body can engage in that discussion. Mr. Early was not a part of that body and you were out of order when you stood there. I don't mind that dialogue, but I didn't mischaracterize this. What I said was I don't agree with 100% of what you said. And what I'm saying is that I wanted more time to actually have that dialogue with you. I agree that we need to have a plan, but I also agree that we all need to be on the same page. And so there was no mischaracterization there as I asked those questions. It's how you interpret it. It's, it's not that. And the motion that's on the floor is not to say no to it. The motion that's on the floor is to allow us to have enough time to review the information and then have that dialogue that you invited us to have with you. You said the only person that had dialogue with you 
was Councilman Mays. Now, I don't believe that it was eight misunderstood council people here didn't know that we could come and have dialogue with you or had the information to have that, that dialogue with you. I think we just, we just been rushed through.